Hi, Rama. It's week 46, day four, and today we are in Acts chapter 8 of our Bible narrative reading plan. Acts chapter 8, we saw that uh, we saw the death of Stephen, his execution, his martyrdom. We saw that there was a young man named Saul who was a part of this, and he is uh, also harassing the early church. But we saw that because of the death of Stephen, don't miss in Acts chapter 8, verse 1, there arose on that day a great persecution among the church in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Now, do you remember in Acts chapter 1, what did Jesus tell his disciples? He said, you will be my witnesses and you will go into Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth, except it's chapter 8 and they're still in Jerusalem. And so God is working. He uses the death of Stephen as a way of sending them out. This persecution that they would not have wished upon themselves, God is using it to disperse them just as he had instructed them to do. And in Acts chapter 8, we see that God truly will save anybody who calls upon the name of the Lord. Uh, we see that uh, Philip, he is being used here. Uh, Philip, one of the earlier leaders in the church, and uh, Philip is proclaiming Christ in Samaria. And that's a place that they did not want to go. That's where the enemy is. They did not like the Samaritans. You, you remember the parable of the Good Samaritan and what Jesus is pointing out there, that they had a terrible relationship. The Jews and the Samaritans did not like one another. And yet Christ is being proclaimed there. And as we're about to see, uh, people are trusting Christ there in Samaria. And we see uh, even a magician, a man who's... Uh, worked wonders there in Samaria because he's uh, taken part of evil and the witchcraft and the, and the satanic work going on there. But Simon the magician believes. And they hear all the way back in Jerusalem that people are, are trusting Christ there in Samaria. The word of God has gone forth. And so they send Peter and John. God does something interesting in Samaria uh, that's unlike the way he normally works. God normally, when someone trusts Christ, they're immediately baptized with the Holy Spirit. They're immersed into the, the body of Christ. You are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, and you don't need a second filling. You don't need a second sign. You don't need uh, the act of speaking in tongues or any of that. Uh, the Bible describes that in Acts as a, as a validating symbol then, but it's not something that continues to this day. Well, instead of those believers in Samaria immediately receiving the Holy Spirit, uh, God waits until uh, Peter and John are there so that there's apostolic witness uh, that these people have truly trusted Christ. And even if Peter and John may not have quite understood why, because uh, they were still not quite grasping that God uh, was sending salvation to all people, they witnessed this. And now we see that salvation has spread even to the Samaritans. Well, Simon, that magician who believed when he sees all this going on, he, he reverts back to his old ways and, and he thinks, wow, I got to make money off of this. And uh, they rebuke him. Simon uh, hears their rebuke and he says, please pray for me uh, that, that he would not uh, continue in this path. And so God is working in unlikely places. He's saving people like a wicked magician. He's saving people like those dirty Samaritans that the Jews would never have thought could be a part of God's family. But then we see that Philip continues his ministry and he meets an Ethiopian eunuch. Now, this is a Gentile who has come to, to, to trust in the God of Israel. He's a Jewish believer, a proselyte. He's converted to Judaism, but he still doesn't understand all things and he can't be a part of the assembly because he's a eunuch. That would have, have kept him apart, uh, away from God's people. He would be cut off from, from God's people. And so uh, Philip explains to him the scriptures from Isaiah 53. And when Philip understands this, uh, when Philip teaches the eunuch this, the eunuch understands this, beginning with this scripture, uh, chapter 8, verse 35, he told him the good news about Jesus. And we see that Philip, uh, Philip is immediately baptized right then and there because there is no other local church to baptize him. And so Philip is doing this early work, the apostolic work we see often in the book of Acts. And the next thing you know, Philip has gone somewhere else. The Holy Spirit has moved him around. God is working in miraculous ways here in the book of Acts. They're not always things that we're going to see reduplicated today because this is pioneer work in the book of Acts. But it's the same God working today, even as he worked in the book of Acts. Be encouraged by God's word. Here's a summary of today's reading.
For more information, go to tunemyheart.org.